This phone has been out for a while now, it's the Xiaomi 12X. I've reviewed all of the other Xiaomi phones in the Xiaomi 12 series, that's the 12 Pro, which I have right here, the Chinese and global model, and also the Xiaomi 12, but this model I'm quite interested in because it's powered by the Snapdragon 870, which I think is still an excellent chipset, and it's a more smaller compact phone. So the screen on this one, 120 hertz refresh rate, it has a cutout in the front of it there for our front facing camera, which is a 32 megapixel camera. Rear main camera is 50 megapixels, 13 megapixel ultra wide, so we don't have the 50 megapixel ultra wide like you get with the Pro model, uh, but it's still an okay camera, it's not bad. And then a five megapixel macro. So the battery capacity of this one is 4,500 milliamp hours. It has 67 watt charging. And overall my time using it, I actually like the Xiaomi 12X here more than the 12 Pro and definitely more than the Xiaomi 12. And just to point out that this review unit here I did get from a company called Heka. They sent this out to me, so thank you so much for doing that. Otherwise, I would not be reviewing the Xiaomi 12X. Included with the box of the Xiaomi 12X, we do have our charger, 67 watts. It takes 41 minutes with my testing. We get this, a Type-A to Type-C cable and then a TPU case, SIM tray tool. So that case is a clear style one, very standard there from Xiaomi. And we do have a little bit of paperwork. So we've got the quick start guide, safety information, and our warranty card. This phone has an excellent build quality and because it's a smaller 6.28 inches, it only weighs 176 grams. So we have curved glass here on the rear and it's Gorilla Glass Victus that they are using with this particular model. Thickness is 8.2 millimeters on the sides and we do have metal volume up and down and power button, curved front screen. So in hand, it makes it a little bit more comfortable. I can get easy access to those power buttons, the volume button there, and an in-screen sc screen fingerprint reader. So just tapping it there, it unlocks quite quick, but the animation can sometimes make it look a little slower than what it really is. Now the location of that in-screen fingerprint reader, I wish it was about here, not down there, which I find sometimes a little bit awkward to get to. So with the cameras on the back here, we do have a 50 megapixel main camera, 13 megapixel ultra wide, and five megapixel, which has autofocus, that is for macro shots, dual tone LED flash, and the color, when you reflect it in certain light, it goes from blue to almost looking like a light purple at times. Our cutout front facing camera is 32 megapixels, so that's the same as the larger 12 Pro model and the 12. The frame on this phone looks great, feels great. It's got rounded edges to it. We've got our speaker here. Now these speakers are tuned by Harman Kardon, microphone IR transmitter, and then down the bottom, Type-C port, microphone, SIM tray takes two nano SIMs, and then the other speaker. So I'll give you a sample later on of those speakers. You can see the antenna lines. The frame has a nice curve to it. It's a metal frame around it, alloy, and it's really high quality. It does feel great. Size-wise, this is what it looks like next to an S22 Ultra and a Xiaomi 12 Pro. You can see it's quite a bit smaller. That 6.28 inches is very comfortable and I do like it. So next to the larger 12 Pro, look at the difference there. It's just much better to hold, more compact, and it's quite refreshing to finally have a smaller phone of this size when everything nowadays seems to be 6.7 inches and over. Now this phone has an excellent AMOLED screen, 6.28 inches as I mentioned before, so nice compact small size, but it doesn't compromise compared to the larger 6.67 or 6.7 oversized screens. We still get pretty much a flagship quality screen in this. It is, okay, so brightness does peak out at, well they claim over a thousand nits, I'm able to measure up to almost 800, so that is great. There is DC dimming, so anti-flicker mode, it is there, but it only works at 60 hertz. You can see when I want to enable it now, it's giving me that little pop-up to tell me that, it, hey, it's only gonna drop the resolution, sorry, the refresh rate, down to 60 hertz now. So if I put that back on 120, which I prefer because it's very fluid and smooth then, you may see a little bit of banding come through, but it doesn't actually seem to be 
too bad with this particular panel. So we do have here the color schemes. You can adjust the color profiles there. The white balance can also be adjusted. And touch is working great on this phone. No problems at all with it. It's really, really good. I just cannot complain about how the responses with touch and gestures work excellent, great too. No problems. I'll just show you some real world images that the screen, because it is curved on the edges, you do see a bit of color shifting, but it's very minimal. Overall, this is a top quality panel that Xiaomi went with in the 12X. The Xiaomi 12X does run MIUI 13. It's had a few updates now and it is very fluid and smooth. So I am on the latest patch at the time of this review. We've got a security patch there from February still. We're in May, so that needs to be updated. I hope that's gonna come through soon. So it is quite good with the animations. They've definitely improved upon things and maybe it's to do with their experience with the Snapdragon 870 is a little bit better than the 8 Gen 1, I don't know, but it feels smoother and better actually than the larger Xiaomi 12 Pro with the more potent chipset, which doesn't really make sense. The gestures, as mentioned, do work really well. Multitasking is very smooth and quick, swapping between our applications. The only complaint that I have is occasionally, if it's been sitting there for a while, I go to unlock the phone, it will sometimes show this little spinning icon in the middle before I get all of my icons showing up. So there's that moment of lag, which is a little bit annoying. They need to address that, I do think. Apps Draw, I do have that enabled. You don't have to use it. You can just have everything all in one here, but I prefer the Apps Draw. So good performance. MIUI 13 running here a lot better than what I've been experiencing with other Xiaomi phones. However, I still do have this one big criticism of MIUI, and that is the amount of bloatware that they put on these phones. It's getting ridiculous. It is almost up to three gigabytes worth of bloat now. So a lot of games, a lot of junk. So they make these deals with these brands to have these applications already pre-installed on their phones and they get money out of it. And apparently that's because they're supposed to be passing on savings to us. But I think you pay enough for this phone anyway. It shouldn't be full of bloat. Very easy to uninstall it all. You can just go into the settings, manage applications, and then uninstall and go along and tick them all. So it only takes a few minutes. But we shouldn't have to do this. It shouldn't have all this extra junk that's on there. I mean, look at it all. And as mentioned, like it's almost three gigabytes worth. Okay, so charge time here, it didn't come out correct. It didn't want to time it properly here, the Antutu app. So I mentioned before, it took me 41 minutes. I think officially they say it's 39. And this time around, it was actually, this was from 3% to 100, took, took 46 minutes. Now 46 minutes for a 60, seven watt charger, that's actually not bad. If it's under an hour, I am happy. I think it's very good. Performance. So the scores here, uh, okay, yes, a little off now from what the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 can do, but don't be fooled by synthetic benchmarks because the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 throttles a lot. This chip, the 870, I think is a very good chip. It barely throttles. It doesn't throttle down that much at all. It doesn't generate as much heat. It's a great chip and still in 2022. It's fantastic. So that before was the balance mode, that's on the performance mode. It did up the CPU score a little bit, but again, synthetic benchmarks, um, I wouldn't worry too much about them. I'll get onto gaming performance later on. Oh, and you can see it did go up almost 12 degrees though, which is quite a bit. Battery life here, so 12 hours and 47 minutes is the fixed battery life test that I do run on these phones at 200 nits brightness. It's a good result, but realistically, you're looking about eight hours, seven and a half hours of screen on time, running at 120 hertz, which is pretty good actually, considering it's a 4,500 milliamp hour battery and a smaller phone here. That's as good as other phones that have 5,000 milliamp hour batteries. This phone does have a level three here of camera two API support. So that means a Gcam ports, and open camera is going to work with full access to everything, which is great. You do not need to have root access for that. And Widevine level one, security level one cert is there, present, good. And that means Netflix, yes, is in full HD, but Amazon Prime Video is not. That is in standard definition according to the bit rate that it does show me with the app. And we have GPS that works pretty well. This is typical Qualcomm. It's gonna to top out the accuracy at three meters. And what about our speakers? Well, they sound worse than the Xiaomi 12 Pro and the 12X. Before I get onto the comparison of these two speakers, we know they're Harman Kardon tuned, 
But what about Type-C to 3.5 audio quality? What is that like? It's actually very good. I've had no problems with it. Voice call quality is good as well. Haptics on this feel fine. And I'll test out first the 12 Pro, then the 12X, and we'll listen to which one is best. Both of them will be at 100% volume. I did not expect that, that the smaller phone is better. Those speakers sound richer, have a little bit more bass than the larger, more powerful Xiaomi 12 Pro. How does it game? So the Snapdragon 870 is still a very good chip, even in 2029. It's a cooler running chip than the Snapdragon 888 or the 8 Gen 1. And it will not throttle as much too. When it plays a game like this, which is Genshin Impact, I get a steady around 40, 42, 43 frames per second. Highest possible visuals here at 60 frames per second. And it continues to deliver that steady frame rate, which is great. It's, it's not fluctuating as much as those hotter chipsets and the more modern Qualcomm chips do, which is not really what you want. So still an excellent chip. Don't worry about it not being able to play games because it will still be able to play every single game out there with really good frame rates. So what I'm going to do now is game for about 40 to an hour or so, 40 minutes to an hour, and we'll see just how hot is the smaller Xiaomi 12X going to get. It has been now just over 40 minutes and I've seen a couple of frame dips and it's getting warm. I can feel it has definitely heated up a little bit, the phone, but it doesn't seem to be getting any hotter. So let's take a look at those temperatures here now. So we are looking at 40, almost 41 degrees. That's on the front of the screen and the back of it. That is a little cooler here, around 36 there was the maximum just near where the camera is. Okay, 38. So it is heating up, it is getting warm, but these temperatures for modern phones and powerful phones aren't actually too bad. The Snapdragon 870s, as I mentioned, is a lot cooler than the 888 or the 8 Gen 1. Rear main camera video now, so this is 4K 30, we get 4K 60 and 8K. Now you can use the digital zoom to go right back into the ultra wide, which I'm using now and all electronic with the ultra wide, but we do get optical with the main camera. So you can see it swap over. That is now 1.1 times digital zoom and two times right there. I wouldn't really go over this because it doesn't look that great. Now the stabilization of that main camera, I'm just gonna demonstrate it. I'm gonna walk here and there's the light jog sideways. You can see it's not actually too bad here. Now occasionally I do see a few judders when I pan around, especially when using that 13 megapixel ultra wide and this is very typical of Xiaomi with their cameras and video. Just in Android in general, we tend to get those stutters that come through, the juddering, which is a little annoying. But overall, I do like the video performance here for 4K 30. And our front-facing camera here, typical Xiaomi fashion, there is no 4K option. Has electronic image stabilization. This is my arm out at the maximum there. I do notice a bit of overexposing here when you are in the sun. Now the audio bitrate is good, 320 kilobits per second.
Now this is, I think, one of the best more compact phones that you can get. It's got the build quality, the fast UI performance, 120 hertz. Battery life is not too bad, around seven to seven and a half hours of on-screen time, 120 hertz. That's me going easy on it too, by the way, so lower brightness and no gaming, mostly just show social media there with it. It has a great main camera, the ultra wide's not too bad, video performance 4K, does have a 320 kilobits per second audio bit rate, kilobit per second. And with this model, the global, it's just 96 for some reason. So of course, Xiaomi's going to have to fix that. The main factors of why I like the Xiaomi 12X more than the bigger 12 Pro is just that, that it's smaller, more compact, yet it still has very good performance. The Snapdragon 870, I think, is a great chipset. And when you game for long extended periods on the Xiaomi 12 Pro, it throttles a lot and the performance is almost about the same. Now it gets up to just over 40 degrees when you game quite a bit on it for extended periods, 42, 41 degrees. Whereas this, at least the Chinese version of the 12 Pro hit a really hot 52 degrees Celsius. So that just shows you how hot that Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is compared to the older, but still super good, in my books, 870. So I think it's the phone to go for out of the 12 series so far. If you don't want to spend the money, you're not fussed about 120 watt charging, and you need that great, small, compact size with an excellent build quality. So thank you so much for watching my review here of Xiaomi's 12X.